Now, though, I'm so glad that Richard E. Grant is right here. He's just released his new book. It's called A Pocket Full of Happiness, based on diaries that were written after he made a promise to his wife, Joan. There she is, shortly before she died. And he joins me now. This is great. It's Thank just you. beautiful. I knew you were a great writer because I've, I've read a lot of your things anyway in articles that you've done. Um, but this, I think, the reaction you've had to this has been astonishing, hasn't it? Yeah, absolutely amazing. I can't, you know, it seems to have resonated with people so, just talking about grief openly. Yeah, exactly. But also, it's this thing, isn't it, Richard? You met your absolute soulmate yeah. and you had all those years with her. But because of that, because you were so close, the grief... That's the price you pay sometimes, isn't it? Yeah, it is. You know, we had 38 years together, so... Uh, and she said to me four days before she died, she said, my, my daughter and I, she said, I know that you'll be sad, but try and find a pocket full of happiness in each day. That. And it's been great because it, me it means that it's given a sort of mantra of how to deal with, you know, the abyss of grief um, mm. in the last 30 months. And also not to feel guilty if we feel happy or joy. In in, That's in the things. thing, isn't it? I think sometimes people don't can't really handle that. Sometimes they sort of, you know, because you, you get the joy from people talking to you about her. Yeah. I mean, I I sadly never met her. What a great woman! I agree. She was astonishing. I mean, funny, <laughs> feisty, so good at her job. I mean, at the end, there's all these amazing plaudits from people, including Meryl Streep, who says what a light she was. So funny and so smart. She was and Scottish. <laughs> That helps as well, I yeah. suppose. But she was... So you two, did you meet because she was obviously a voice coach amongst many other things, but is that how the two of you got together in the first place? Yeah, um, an agent said to me that I should... Because it was 1982 and there were all these dramas being made about the Irish Troubles that right. maybe because I was, had black hair and blonde, uh, blue eyes, I could um, play Irish parts. So I okay. went and he said, you know, how's your... Belfast accent, I said, debatable. So <laughs> Debatable? <laughs> yeah, <yes>. debatable. <laughs> so I went and had accent classes with her and then asked for some private lessons and then she asked me to put some stuff on tape for her of a play at the Royal Shakespeare Company she was coaching on um, oh. in Saswati, which is the language that I speak from where I grew up. Of course. And that's how we met. And so that conversation began in bed in January 1983 and ended in bed on the 2nd of September 2021. Wow, that's astonishing, isn't it? Yeah. And you did, I mean, like I said, no one's got a bad, a bad word to say about her. You and your daughter have had to go through losing her, mm -hmm. but you're incredibly close, aren't you, the two of you? Yeah. You uh, really are. What did she think of the book? Uh, was it hard for her to read it? It was, and I said to her that I wouldn't publish anything until she had read it, and she vetoed the whole thing. Right. I would accept that, and, but she said it's a... An accurate tribute to good. Well, it's a tribute. Were. It's an absolute tribute. It really is. I do wonder, though, um, what Joan thought of the the other women in your life, um, who you've got a statue to in in your garden, and and I wonder how she she coped with that. It's like obsession you have with Barbara. <laughs> yes, Streisand. yeah, two Jones in my life, Barbara Jones Streisand <laughs> and Joan Washington. Um, and that's the, that's the sculpture. Where did you get that from? Did well, you commission it? What was I, it all about? I commissioned the two-foot-tall sculpture and then that um, preceding march around it was a part of a set that on a film that I worked on this summer and they were about to trash it and I said, could I please save oh, it and it? have it for my garden? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and did Joan understand your obsession with Barbara Streisand? She did. She thought she was beautiful and talented and you know, all of those things and she coached on her film Yentl before I'd even met her. Oh, um, wow. So she knew her um, and she accepted. She said, look, she's married to James Brolin. <laughs> um, You've not got a chance. You're married to me. <laughs> So it's fine. Exactly. You can worship her from afar, but that's as far as it goes. Yeah. Um, you mentioned obviously being from Swaziland, and one of the things that I, I know people talk about all the wonderful work that you've done. Wawa, I love that film. Oh, thank you. That was. Do you know that we still say to one another, me and my husband, we have to have a Wawa, which oh. is which means we sit down and sort of like have a chat about what we're doing and make sure that we're all on the same page. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's really right. strange. But that was such a great film. Thank you very much. So so interesting, and obviously you've done. Many a film, but as far as the, the Spice Girls movie goes, you're an honorary Spice Girl. Old Spice. You're Old Spice, you yeah. really are. Is that what they call you? They did, yeah. That's quite cheeky, but at the same time, very sweet. Well, I was the age of their fathers when we made the movie. I was, you know, early 40s and they were 20. They were babies, yeah. weren't they? Oh, it's <laughs> a really, really funny film, though. I mean, it has stood the test of time. It is 
it's you know how some of these don't work when it's a movie about a band. Yeah. It doesn't really work. But in that case, it just it just caught the spirit of the time. I yeah. think. And because most of it was a lot of it was improvised and off the cuff. You know, yeah. you've got the real spirit of who who they are and who they were. Gosh. So, and I loved working with them. Do you know you never ever ever stop? You never stop. Do, do you, I don't think you ever will, will you? Um, because you you know you've you've done some amazing parts recently. And thank you. Are you at the stage in your life where you can just sort of pick and choose, really? You just do it if you want to do it? No, you still have to audition and yeah, you get other people's leftovers. <laughs> you do. Well, you make the best of them. <laughs> I do. <laughs> to say you do make the best of them. Grab life. Oh, for goodness sake. And we were talking about the Spice Girls. Did you go? You went to the party, didn't you? The big 50th party. That must have been great fun. To Jerry Horner's. Uh, Jerry yeah. Halliwell. Yeah, yeah, Jerry Halliwell Horner. Horner, she is now. Yeah. yeah. And Shirley Bassey was I was sitting next to Jerry on, on her left and on her right was Shirley Bassey, <gasps> who sang Happy Birthday to her, which yeah, was extraordinary. Wow. She's 85. Is she 85? She must be. Goodness yeah. me, that's... And she sounds exactly like she always did. That's Gosh. what's so astonishing about her. And it's the thing of, as you said, which I think is really interesting, you can still find moments of happiness. Yeah. Like, you know, a pocket full of happiness is mm -hmm. obviously what the, bo the book has said. And, and Jones kind of gave you permission to do that. I mean, yeah. actually more than permission, she insisted. Yeah. You know, you have to find something in every single day that makes you happy. She, she, she did this other thing where she went through about the 20 women that we know who are on single. Ooh. And she basically detonated each one <laughs> with a little comment. And she said, well, she'd drive you nuts and her, you know, her accent or she talks too much <laughs> or she does this. I said, I don't know exactly what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's brilliant. Oh, gosh, she was so yeah. special. Yeah. Lioness. Yeah, I think so. And, and like I say, she worked with, gosh, just about everybody she worked oh, yeah. with. And you do forget that because you, you, you sort of assume, you know, you're an actor and of course you can do all of these accents and you can do all of these different, you know, different characters. Of course you can, but you need help. Yeah. You know, you do need help. And she was the, she was the top of her game, wasn't she? Really? She, was. there wasn't, she was the go-to. She was, absolutely. Yep. If you wanted that... The gold you know, standard. Yeah, definitely gold standard. And very handy for you as well, if you had a part that you... Yeah, the last, the last thing she taught me was a working-class Sheffield accent to play uh, an old drag queen called uh, Loco Chanel, and everybody's talking about Jamie, the musical. Loco Chanel, yeah. brilliant part. <laughs> oh, an amazing part, so she taught you that too. Yeah, and she said, stop flirting with me <laughs> when I was, she was teaching me. And I said, well, it worked first time 38 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you know what? Isn't it lovely to talk about somebody that you loved that sadly is no longer here, but you can laugh? Yeah. So many laughs. And there are so many, so many good times in here. Thank you. Um, and it really has, like I said, it's really resonated with so many people and helped an awful lot of people as well. And you've taken it, taken it on the road too. I have, yeah. yeah doing it on my show. I'm going to Australia on Wednesday. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. And what sort of reaction do you get then? I mean, I would imagine people just want to talk to you and share experiences and things. They do. And there's a, in the second half, there's a, um, a dialogue with yeah. the audience. They ask questions, I answer them, and then I see them at the book signing afterwards. And you, right. know, you, you get one-to-one. -one yeah, of people. course you do. And people will want to tell you, yeah. to tell you stuff. Does it help you a little bit? Yeah, hugely, because it means that the, the weird thing that happens after somebody's died is that after a couple of months, people don't mention the person as though right. either you're going to fall apart or that they feel that or they will cross the road rather than talk. And yeah. you want to talk about the person. Of course you do. Yeah. yeah. You that's don't want them really... cancelled out. So. No, that's really, really good advice. It's a beautiful, beautiful book. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. It's always great to see you. And A Pocket Full of Happiness is out right now. Highly recommend it.